And welcome back to Dominican Rendezvous. I'm very happy you joined once again. Thank you for joining. Thank you for not only watching, but subscribing to the video. Thank you for hitting that thumbs up, like button down below, as well as the notification bell. Please share this channel. Please check out the description box for additional ways that you may support the channel and find out more information about Dominican Rendezvous. Today, I want to talk about something that's really near and dear to my heart, and that is agriculture and farming. For those of you who know me, uh, you know that most of my professional career has been in agriculture and agricultural marketing and sales. And so as a consequence, agriculture is very, very important to me. Agriculture is one of the first things that drew my attention to and, and eventual visiting to the Dominican Republic. Um, and for that reason, I have a strong affinity to uh, agriculture and farming. Many forget how important farming and farmlands are uh, to a country. Many people don't even think about it. It's amazing how even in the United States, many people go to the grocery store and they see food, they see vegetables, they see produce, fruit and vegetables, but they really give no consideration to where this fruit and this vegetable, this produce, and most of this food actually comes from and how it's produced and all that it takes to get it from... Um, farm to fork or from farm to table. So that is something that is very near and dear to my heart. Farming and farmlands do and can oftentimes add prosperity to a country and particularly like the Dominican Republic, it is a uh, part of the economy that is oftentimes overlooked by many who visit the uh, Dominican Republic or even live in the Dominican Republic. So in this episode of Dominican Rendezvous, I want to take a quick look at some of the aspects of farming in the Dominican Republic. Now, agriculture in the Dominican Republic makes up, from my last um, checking, up to 11% of the GDP in the Dominican Republic, and it also provides up to 15% of the employment in the Dominican Republic, albeit it is not um, high wage employment, uh, but it, yet they are uh, providing 15% of the uh, population employment in the Dominican Republic. Now, as you know, the Dominican Republic shares part of an island uh, with, with Haiti, and the Dominican Republic depends on many of its products produced on its farms. Uh, recently, there was a National Day of the Farmer, and on that day in the Dominican Repo Republic, you will see and hear many making claims as to the importance of the agricultural sector in the Dominican Republic. It is very, very important, the agricultural sector in the Dominican Republic. I can't stress that enough. But the question is, is there help or is there enough help from the government? It is a fact that farmers need support. It is a fact that they need governmental support. It is a fact that farming depends on roads. It takes roads to move the products. And so, as I've mentioned before, transportation is very important in the Dominican Republic. Figuring out some of the problems with transportation because the farmers and the farming community, the agriculture community, depends on these roads. Many of the farmers... Uh, unfortunately may lose money or may not be paid at all or paid what they're worth uh, uh, for some of their their products. Many of the farmers end up having to move to the city uh, to make a living because they certainly or simply cannot continue making a living uh, with what they're doing um, in the farming communities. And so that's why I'm calling for more support for agriculture in the Dominican Republic. Now, have, <clears throat> excuse me, have Having said that, the main crops in the Dominican Republic, by no stretch of the imagination, doesn't take much to figure this out, is sugarcane and uh, rice, sugarcane and rice. Um, but due to some natural disasters, hurricanes, droughts, uh, landslides, storms, these crops oftentimes face a tough go simply because of the natural disasters that are prevalent. Sometimes there's just there's this too much rain. Too much rain equals too much water. Too much water washes away everything. And that is a continual uh, concern and a continual problem in the Dominican Republic. There's frequent flooding in the agricultural areas and in the rural communities. 
And, you know, you can see this online. You can see this on some of the videos on YouTube as well as uh, some of the news organizations uh, uh, that publish this, uh, this information. Heavy rains are, are very severe, and especially for sustenance crops, you know, bananas, pineapple, uh, avocado, mango, corn, fruits, all these are sold for money. And if they cannot, if they cannot produce the crop, uh, then there are losses. People will eventually, farmers, in this case, productores, pro, um, um, agriculture productores, will continue to stop planting rice and planting pumpkins, uh, especially near rivers due to, to the flooding, uh, because it just is not going to work and is not going to be worth their inves investment. Um, perhaps more dredging of rivers is seen as an option, get these rivers going deeper so that the flooding has stopped. I know that the government has been trying to do some of that as far as dredging out the rivers so that it could help prevent uh, the, 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 the flooding of the farmlands and of the agricultural fields. The bottom line is, is that people are going to be hungry as a result if more attention isn't paid to some of the agricultural concern. There's just not enough to, to barter on the market with, with uh, agricultural products if we, they have to continue fighting some of the fights that they have to fight. You have problems with people stealing cattle. Uh, that also happens. And, and unfortunately, it's the small farmers who suffer. The big conglomerates, the big, the big farming operations, perhaps not so much. They can afford to provide security and, 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 and various uh, technologies to to protect their things but the small farmers is who is going to uh, suffer the most the government in my recent readings has promised to invest more by way of more technological greenhousing or greenhouses um, they have promised to reduce interest payments on loans that they are giving to 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 farming and the farming community they're trying to encourage more women to to get into to farming and again one of the best things that they can do is establish more agricultural credit through the agricultural bank that would help a lot of farmers a lot uh, credit is king uh, when it comes to uh, agriculture and agriculture cultural farming. Um, the Dominican Republic produces, as I've already mentioned, a lot of, of crops. Um, they do export a lot of peppers. They export tomatoes. They export avocados. They export cucumbers. Uh, tropical fruits. Uh, and even some Chinese vegetables. Um, you perhaps saw one of my former videos where I talked about the green avocado uh, that the Dominican Republic produces. And I love it. It's a delicious avocado. It's just rich and just melts in your mouth. Unlike the Haas avocado that many Americans are familiar with, you ought to try the green avocado if you are, uh, you know, wherever you are in the Dominican Republic or even in the United States if it is available for you. Now, having said that, and because I do like to talk about business in the Dominican Republic and business and real estate opportunities, um, there are people that I've actually met and who I actually know, and I'm actually one of those people, who are very, very interested in knowing more about uh, farming opportunities in the Dominican Republic. Now, most of the people that I've talked to are located near Cabrete in the north coast. Uh, they are in Cabrera, Rio San Juan, Amao um, El Norte, is another place where they are considering. Um, they are looking at properties that are various sizes of various purposes. Um, you want to make sure that your soil is nicely um, well drained. Again, you don't want flooding to take care, uh, or flooding to take uh, place on your property. Um, they, but they have nice soils up there, or rich volcanic soils. Um, Bulk crops like sugar cane and rice and bananas and plantains and avocados and even citrus and melons, coffee, uh, dark cocoa beans love the high altitudes. They love the good warm climates that are available. Um, up there, the rainfall is decent, so there's adequate irrigation uh, for, for, for many of the crops. Um, even ranching, if you're into ranching and dairy, cattle farming uh, and horse farming, that would be an option as well. Sheeps, goats, pigs, chickens. 
chickens, um, even fish farming, shrimps, tilapia. Ugh, I hate tilapia. Sorry, that was just a personal comment. But fish farming is a possibility. Um, you can find skilled farm labor. It's relatively cheap, and it's a good life. I mean, if you're thinking about, you know, a lot of people want to talk about the beaches, the beaches, the beaches, but think about, you know, the farm life, the tranquility uh, that you can have by being on the farm, like the exercise that you're going to get as being a uh, producer or a farmer, uh, the views, a nice home up there overlooking your your farmlands. Um, you know, consider pepper farming, uh, avocado farming. Look into those. Those are uh, some good opportunities that may uh, exist uh, for you. Peppers are generally grown in the const- peppers. And what I mean by peppers are the red bell peppers, orange and yellow peppers uh, that you sometimes see in the store, particularly in Miami. Um, you'll see the, the Dominican peppers are there. Uh, but they are particularly from the area called Constanza and San Jose de Ochoa. Um, they're in high altitude areas of above sea level. Um, they're normally grown in greenhouse, uh, greenhouses um, with a high impact plastic. They're, they're not glass. There's a uh, high impact plastic around them so that they can grow uh, inside them. Um, they generally place in the ground and then three months later, boom, you have a harvest. Um, the plants can grow anywhere from 10 to 12 feet and um, pretty much grow seven to nine months out of the year. And you put them in a pack house. You get yourself a pack house, set up your pack house, get yourself a line set up, get people packing it for you. You, get it trucked out to Santo Domingo, and then from Santo Domingo, you can ship it out to Southern Florida where it can be sold. I know that sounds easy, and it's not as easy as it sounds, but that's the general idea of how it works. Um, so I hope that you might consider investing in farming and agriculture. The the economy of the Dominican Republic would appreciate it. Um, it's something that I've been thinking about. I uh, haven't quite pulled the trigger on it yet, uh, but I hope to uh, look into that more myself. So I'm speaking to myself as I'm speaking to you. From me to you, Dominican Rendezvous.